Almost 50 years ago, a scientist named Richard Feynman predicted the future, the future of nanotechnology. He predicted what needed to be done and how it might be done, all before anyone had really even seen an atom with a microscope. It was 1959, only two years after the first satellite was launched into space, and it would be another two years before the first manned spaceflight. Why can't we write the entire 24 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pen? Feynman, one of the most brilliant people of his time, asked that simple question. His talk, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, would become a roadmap for nanotechnology. Feynman looked into the future and predicted how technology might make things smaller and smaller. How small? The size of atoms. I don't know how to do this on a small scale in a practical way, but I do know that computing machines are very large. They fill rooms. Why can't we make them very small, make them of little wires, little elements? And by little, I mean little. For instance, the wires should be 10 or 100 atoms in diameter. Today, the smallest parts inside a computer chip are about 100 nanometers. What's a nanometer? One billionth of a meter. That means if you laid one million of these computer parts side by side, they would measure only one inch across. A few years, these parts will be only a few atoms. Computers will be hundreds of times faster. But I am not afraid to consider the final question as to whether ultimately, in the great future, we can arrange the atoms the way we want. The very atoms, all the way down. What would happen if we could arrange the atoms one by one the way we want them? In 1989, Don Eigler and his colleagues at IBM did just that. They moved individual atoms, 35 in all to spell out IBM, 40 years after Feynman predicted the future. Today, scientists are using nanotechnology and making things smaller and smaller. <laughs>